Okay, <clears throat> welcome to the next video, video 12 of the D4 series. Um, this deals with uh, two moves in reply to, to D4. And um, these are the moves uh, D6 and G6. They are, of course, um, closely related. Um, so we'll do this in uh, one video. Um, first off, start with d6. Actually, this move is um, yeah, it's a tricky one. Um, if you want to play the suggested repertoire, um, especially in regards to the king's Indian, because d6 keeps um, black's options um, very much open. He can. Um, <coughs> either still play a king's indian setup with the fianchetto or he might go for a quick e5 knight d7 setup which looks like an old indian opening so <clears throat> it's um it's a bit a bit tricky because um white's main move here or main moves um are knight f3 and um, also e4. Um, the reason why c4 is less popular here is uh, the move e5. And uh, this is actually a bit tricky to play for white. The problem is that um, the exchange here doesn't promise white anything. It's just um, an equal position already. You can look this up. Uh, Black even has got a pos positive score here. Amazingly, it um, really nothing white should play for. Um, what else can white do? I can play moves like knight c3, which immediately gets the queen out. <clears throat> but Black gets um, a good development and um, always uh, wins um, some time on white's queen. There's also the move knight f3, um, which might be answered with um, with e4. Knight g5 then is the main move, and then f5. Um, this variation um, is actually quite interesting for black to play. Also, uh, this is a line that has got uh, more than a 50% score if you look at a huge game database. Um, and it's um, not easy to play for white, especially because of uh, the advanced pawn on e4. Black um, sometimes um, even gets a slight space advantage here. Um, so it's um, it's a bit annoying, this move e5. Um, what I can recommend, if you want to play c4, um, and you really need to play c4 here, if you um, want to get into the king's Indian lines I propose, um, what I recommend, could recommend here is the move d5, which is uh, rare but uh, but interesting. Um, black then mostly plays f f5 here, which um, is logical to make use of um, the fact that the knight is still on g8. And then white could uh, could play e4, f takes e4, knight c3, knight f6, and g knight g2 e2. <coughs> Pardon me. The idea then is to play uh, knight g3 and maybe bishop g5 at some point to get the pawn back on e4 and um, and hope to establish um, a nice outpost, a nice, a nice um, square on e4. Um, this is um, an interesting way to play if you want to go c4. Um, I really ad advise to, um, to, to, to look at this because it's, it's really a tricky line. It's, um, it's, it's very... Um, difficult for white to play. For instance, I already showed this, but this position um, playing with white and you have no idea what, what's going on can be really annoying. So it's um, it's good to, to look at something here. Um, please note that you, of course, cannot play knight f3 with our repertoire because black then simply transpose this or can transpose um, into a king's Indian and you have the knight on f3 which is, well, no problem, but it's uh, simply outside of the things you have looked at the king's Indian, like f3, f4, or 
this flexible h3 line where white knights often ends up on e2 instead of f3 so um you need to choose um, carefully here um, another completely different approach which is um, interesting and um, um, maybe a good idea to look at is to simply play e4 in this position and after knight f6 knight c3 just play an e4 line it's um, a bit uh, <coughs> unusual maybe but uh, it's maybe a good idea to to look at some line here because well, the pilk defense or, or modern defense is um, not the most difficult opening to play from a white's point of view. Um, maybe let's say g6, and then you um, look at some interesting um, aggressive line like f4, or maybe bishop g5. This is actually um, the favorite line by uh, <coughs> Alexey Dreyev, <coughs> who I mentioned numerous times already. As a, a nice player to look at um, if you want to build a D4, D4 repertoire he always goes for this line because he's got the same problem essentially he plays the Zemish against the King's Indian and if someone plays uh, D6 okay he says forget about this I'll play play Pilk Pilk's defense um, from white from right from the white side and I'm happy to to take the center and play some um, aggressive moves here um, for instance, after bishop g5, um, play can, can can continue bishop g7, and then white has a choice between uh, queen d2 or even f4, which is, um, well, just from the looks of it, a very aggressive uh, setup. Um, it's maybe an idea to, to have a look at this. Um, this also makes sense in conjunction with another question. What do you play if black plays g6? Um, if you then go for c4, which is of course possible, um, you ha have to think about some lines here. You absolutely need to play this move here in, in order to be ready for <clears throat> for the transposition to the king's Indian. So it makes little sense to, for instance, um, play knight f3 here, after which black easily can go back to the king's Indian and you got a setup you didn't want to play um so uh, knight c3 here and then you would um, <clears throat> need to um, look at um, various lines um, for instance uh, knight c6 okay this is not a huge problem as d5 is better for white i have to look at one or two lines um i can show show the best one quickly or one of the best ones this line for instance simply better for white because uh, queen and bishop are misplaced um okay let's return here um more dangerous um are, are e5 which you need to look at can be uh, can be interesting for black to play and also which is very tricky knight d7 not played often but interesting um and now you're at a <laughs> A bit uh, of uh, of a of a dilemma here, because you don't want to play f3 really in this position, because uh, very often black has got uh, ideas to exchange this bishop. Of course, this is never possible in the king's Indian with a knight already here. For instance, if um, if white takes here now, black even has this uh, annoying check and um, this idea. So f3 is uh, not such a good move here. Um, if you look look at this in uh, in more detail, you will find out that actually um, all strong players um, go for knight f3 here, and uh, then play can easily transpose again into a king's Indian with knight on f3. It's not such a big deal because black is already committed to the line with knight d7, so this would be just one line to look at. But it's it's really it's 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 quite a lot of stuff to at least have an idea about and um if you decide on on d6 to play for e4 then uh, you also have an automatic good reply on g6 as you then just uh, go for this and then as suggested uh, f4 or bishop g5 of course you can also choose another line um, like bishop um, 
um, bishop e3 or um, bishop uh, c4 or something. It's just a matter of taste. Um, it's, it's, it's maybe a good idea to pick some line against the modern and the, and the pilk defense um, and go for this as it avoids a lot of um, transpositional problems. Um, there are some, some other little issues here. Um, for instance, let's let's say this and c4. And um, what what do you play now? If black oops, if black plays f5, it's not uh, very threatening or something. But then uh, you're pretty much forced to play uh, a main line of the um, of the Dutch Leningrad, which maybe you don't want to play in the first place. Um, it's uh, it's um, a bit of an annoying move order here. Um, so it's uh, it's all fine if you study all these little move order wrinkles here, but uh, I think it's it's really a good a good solution to to opt for this and uh, just just play um, a pilk here. Um, okay, one line black is. Um, able to play of course is e5 here there you would need some some idea as well one one possibility here is to to look quickly at the main line it's not a, a huge body of theory or if you want to play real aggressive here you can also even go for for this g4 move which is very aggressive um it's um, i think not um you, you won't um, get this position too often if you allow this uh, transposition. Um, I won't go into details of uh, G4, um, but it's uh, it's an interesting option to, to deviate at an early stage to get a sharp position. Um, okay, um, this is um, really a matter of taste. If you want to go into all this um, move all the things or just um, battle this head on with e4. Um, <clears throat> one line I'd like to mention in this position um, is um, another tricky little move. <laughs> if you um, play the Zamish against um, the King's Indian, which is my main proposal here, there's also the move f3 here. This, um, of course, has a little bit of a Zamish flavor already. If uh, black plays g6 now, which uh, he often does, you just go <coughs> go for c4 and uh, transpose back into the Zamish. There are also some independent lines like e5, d5, bishop e7, c4, which are rather similar to a Zamish setup, but black has the bishop on e7. Um, this f3 move can be interesting if you play the Zamish. Um, note that you cannot get into this if, uh, oops, if black starts with g6, of course. Here f3 would make, uh, I think, little sense because of move like, st uh, like uh, d5, for instance. So it's a good idea to, to look at d6 and g6 uh, in some details, as um, um, they are they're really uh, tricky to face. Yeah, thanks for, for watching this video. And um, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you if you like it. You get notified of new uploads, and it's um, completely um, for free. Okay, um, the series uh, will be continued, of course, um, with more videos um, dealing then with uh, already rather rare lines. But as I'm on um, on a vacation, uh, playing a tournament actually, um, the series will continue in about two weeks. I won't be able to make videos while I'm away. So um, till then, bye.